There's this general fact that the further we are from insects, the happier we tend to be. But then we see one of these and go, wow, that's a beautiful creature. Let me tell you this, you've been lied to, okay? Butterflies are just as creepy as other bugs, you just have to look a little closer. So in this episode of Creepy Crawlies, we're looking at none other than the monarch butterfly. Have you watched that one episode of Spongebob with the butterfly? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that, that one scarred me for life, I'm not gonna lie, guys. Anyways, you may or may not know already, but monarch butterflies have been recently labeled as an endangered species. I feel like a lot of people don't really know what that means, and that's why I'm here. To bring forth the knowledge. So you gotta make sure to subscribe if you gain a couple brain wrinkles from this video. So again, what does it mean to be an endangered species? And that's where the IUCN, or the International Union for Conservation of Nature, comes into play. In short, the IUCN assesses the conservation status of a species anywhere on the globe. Specifically, their segment called the Red List, which aims to assess the conservation status of a species. This system ranks species in one of nine categories to describe an accurate status of that particular species. Going from not evaluated, to data deficient, to least concerned, to near threatened, to vulnerable, then to endangered, but it keeps going to critically endangered, extinct in the wild, and then finally extinct. It's really important to have a ranking system because everyone says, oh, this animal is declining. But what does that really mean? Are they slowly declining? Are they slightly less than they were before? Or are they almost endangered, almost extinct, and it's good to figure out where that sort of fits between the lines. So in other words, when the IUCN Red List made monarchs an endangered species, it really moved up just another rank past vulnerable. There's a couple different things that'll change this ranking of a species, but the most important one is the decline in a population. And for something to reach endangered, they have to have a population decline of 50 to 70% in the last 10 years, and that's exactly what we're seeing with the monarch butterflies. Again, thankfully, we have the system that tells our communities and our conservation programs, maybe we should be paying more attention to this species now, and this butterfly probably needs more attention. Especially Aisha, she needs to pay more attention. Stop, you know how badly I hate, I hate them. Look, he just wants to say hi to you. <gasps> okay, okay, I took it to my house. Don't cancel me, we're friends. And he definitely enjoyed his visit. But now that he's here, let's look at this dude. From an animal standpoint, it's very colorful, just like many other butterflies, and they're not good tasting. In fact, they're poisonous. See, all this color is kind of trying to tell a predator, back off, I'm not very tasty. Oh right, the poison, the poison for Cusco, the poison chosen specially to kill Cusco, Cusco's poison. If you watched my video about poisons, venoms, and toxungens, you might be familiar with this idea that a lot of poisonous animals don't produce their own poison, but they actually eat something that gives them sort of like a poisonous chemical. You see, monarchs only eat milkweed plants, and milkweed plants produce compounds called cardiac glycosides, which disrupt molecular pumps that control the proper flow of ions in and out of the cells. Most other bugs cannot eat milkweed plants and survive, but monarchs have been able to thrive on milkweed plants because of not one, but three genetic mutations that alter three different amino acids in their proteins. The reason we know this is we can replicate monarchs' evolution with the faster breeding fruit fly. Using CRISPR, a gene altering tool, you can essentially make your everyday fruit fly into your favorite spore creation. Okay, that might be uh, oversimplifying a little bit, but it's partially true and a little bit scary if you think about it. In the experiment, the evolutionary biologist added one gene at a time, noting that the first gene only made the monarch slightly resistant to the milkweed toxins, but two allowed them to be far more protected and the third gene finalized their toxic immunity, allowing monarchs to thrive on milkweed. Weirdly enough, the order in which the genes evolved is also really crucial. So just adding the first gene, and then the third gene, and then the second gene would make you end up with a lot of butterflies that have neurological defects. 
So I think it's safe to say that for thousands of years, monarchs have co-evolved and have been dependent on milkweed plants to offer a protection from predators. Unfortunately, this dependence has only made the species even more vulnerable to extinction. Less milkweed for caterpillars means less to eat for the adult butterflies and less to breed, and it's sort of a slippery slope from there. All in all, it's super sad to see an animal becoming endangered that I grew up with. I remember in first grade science class, the teacher brought a little monarch caterpillar and we watched every day as it slowly metamorphosized into an adult butterfly. Part of me wonders if kids will ever get to experience these sort of things in the future. So that's gonna wrap this one up. I hope you gained a new fear maybe, or maybe gained a wrinkle or learned something. And if you did, drop a like and subscribe for more creepy crawlies.